Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about the benefits of hot peppers. And we're talking about things like cayenne, jalapenos, any kind of pepper that has that natural hotness to it. Though initially I wanted to talk about cayenne, I realized, well, this really, a lot of times when you look up the health benefits of cayenne, it applies to all of these because it is that capsaicin that you find in the hot peppers that gives it the main health benefits. And the hotter the pepper, the higher the capsaicin. Though that doesn't mean you should go with the hottest, hottest peppers they have out there necessarily. In fact, some of those are getting to the point now where they can be dangerous. So I'm just talking about our standard peppers. Like I said, cayenne, jalapeno, and like my favorite, which is what I grow, I've got some dehydrated up here, are the uh, Chinese five color peppers. I love these because of the color and because they grow so well for us. And then I do powder it up and make my own pepper powder out of that. And that's the color ends up being when I use all five colors or if I let all the peppers mature until they're red and then dehydrate, I can get a much redder color like you'll see in this picture here. So I do love my hot peppers, but the great thing is, is even if you do not, cannot handle spicy foods, do not like hot peppers, you can still take things like this one here. This is a cayenne pepper. You can take such things by in capsule form, whether it be you purchase them that way or you buy the empty capsules and just fill them yourself. Sometimes that can save you money, but sometimes not because you still have to buy the empty capsules and then go through all the work. So it's all going to depend on your time and then just weighing out the overall cost. So the nutrients you're going to find in your hot peppers are going to be A, B6, C, K1, potassium, copper, so now let's talk about the things that they can benefit. It's really great for digestive health. And this one often surprises people because if people who have stomach issues are often told we shouldn't have spicy food. Well, actually it's the hot, the hot peppers can be very good for helping with many different digestive issues that you have. And some people will use it for things like, um, acid reflux and much more. And just so you know, before I continue on from here, I compile this information from many different sites such as Dr. Axe, the NIH, which is National Institutes of Health.gov, where they do the studies and they break them down and they can be dry reading, but I'll link to at least one of those down below, as well as to the link to Dr. Axe's, but I use many other medical sites, natural health sites and more. Anyway, I wanted to say that before I continue on because the next thing I have on the list is it can help to treat and prevent cancer. And that is proven in those studies that you'll find at the NIH. It is an analgesic, which means it is a natural pain reliever. And this is for all kinds of pain. This can be for headache. This can be for arthritis pain and much more. Now that is taken internally but can also be used topically in the form of a salve or a rub. And in fact, I actually use red pepper flakes in this case because they're easier to strain out. But when I first started making my own muscle and joint rub, I was making it just putting cayenne pepper right in there. The th reason I don't use this anymore is because it tends to clump at the bottom of your jar or bottle or whatever you're putting it in. So instead what I do is I infuse the oil with red pepper flakes and they're easy to strain out when I'm ready to strain it out. That adds that heat, a little bit of heat to the rub. But anyway, I have a video on that. I'll link to the most recent one I did on my oil infusion for the jo joint and muscle rub, which includes the red pepper flakes and several other herbs. Then I'll also link to the older video I have where I show adding a bunch of essential oils and that's gonna be, those are gonna be completely optional and entirely up to you, which ones you wanna use and how much. Oh, and while I'm at it, I'll also be linking to my full playlist where I do herb profiles just like this one. And not just herbs, but foods, oils, and more where I do profiles on the different things and the health benefits of and ways you can use them. And as far as headaches, uh, the, the, hot, the capsaicin is especially good for cluster headaches and migraines. And believe it or not, it's even good for helping to treat various skin conditions in the form of a salve as well. And that includes psoriasis. It can help manage diabetes and is 
helpful with weight loss because it not only works to help increase your metabolism, but helps to curb the appetite. So it's a little bit of an appetite suppressant. It's helpful at protecting the brain, which means it can be helpful at preventing Alzheimer's, stroke, and in helping to increase your memory. Really great for heart health and overall circulation. And I did already mention it's good for joint and muscle pain. Really good for helping to prevent or cure colds and flus. It is a natural antifungal. It can actually help prevent allergies and their symptoms. And since it's a, nat it's a natural antimicrobial, it can work as a food preservative. For example, like the thing like the uh, honey infused garlic. And I've been bringing that one up quite a bit. And I do like to add cayenne pepper to that, increase the heat. But that is just a, the honey alone is a natural preservative, but so is the pepper when I add that to it. So I don't have to worry about it spoiling, even though I do still prefer to keep it in the refrigerator because I like it cold. You can keep your honey infused garlic in the cabinet, especially if you're adding things like any kind of hot pepper to it. And that applies to your fire cider as well. It can be very cleansing and is great for liver health and increases alertness. So now let's talk a little bit about ways you can use it that I haven't mentioned yet. So let me just recap. You can make capsules out of it if you can't handle eating it in your foods. And you can also use it topically in salves and rubs. And you can also, if you like this, and I, I do this sometimes, I like, in this case, I do like to usually use red pepper flakes. I will throw those into my various teas. Just take a pinch and throw it into my pot of tea and then let it brew. Usually that's going to be something where I'm actually making more of a decoction as I'm simmering it for a while. So anything that would have whole cloves, cinnamon sticks, chunks of ginger root, a turkey tail mushroom, astragalus root, and much more. So those kind of teas right there, I'll throw the red pepper flakes in there and then let it all simmer together to really pull all the nutrients out of that. And it does make for a spicy tea, but I do really enjoy that. And then of course, if you like your food spicy, just try to add a little to everything you eat. I'll put it on my eggs. I put it on just about any meal that I eat, anything. Uh, but of course, if you have out, just like with any herb, you always got to be careful. If you start having any kind of negative reaction, then you need to cut back or you need to actually stop taking it for a while. Typically, things like this is going to be a result of allergic reaction to it. So any kind of allergic reaction, and if you have nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, though, those are some pretty good signs that you should quit taking it all together. And then if you're growing your own peppers, um, I use, what I used to do with my Chinese five color is I used to chop them up and freeze them and then just take a little bit and throw it into dishes. But now I do prefer to dehydrate them. The only reason I haven't powdered this yet is because they just look so pretty in the jar but I dehydrate them and then I powder them and that makes it really easy to use and add to anything. So it, that's what makes it so easy. If you like it spicy, you can just add a little bit or more as much as you want to whatever you're eating. And you can even use it in sweet stuff too. In fact, I've added cayenne pepper to hot chocolate before. I'm not a big hot chocolate drinker, but I've added it to hot chocolate and even to my coffee in the morning. And then if you don't like it, capsules are the way to go. So I hope you found this video helpful and any thoughts, ideas of ways that you like to use it or how has it helped you in, with various health issues, please share those comments down below. And don't forget to check out the links I'll be putting in the description box by clicking on more or show more somewhere right down here below the video screen. So you can open up that description box and find all my links. And thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.